Hello, I'm author Gregory Allen Burho, the author of the book Vendetta Ride, the true story of Wyatt Earp. I wanted to talk this time about the actual Vendetta Ride itself. Now, this came about because of the so-called gunfight at the OK Corral, which wasn't technically at the OK Corral, but that's what it became known as, uh, in which the Earp brothers uh, attempted to remove the guns from several of these cowboys. The cowboys being a criminal organization at the time. Uh, almost sort of like an early mafia in the States. And it's a long and complicated story, which my book goes into. There are a lot of uh, events that, that took place that led to the, the tensions at that point when the Earps attempted to, because Carrying guns, well, you were allowed to carry guns in Tombstone, yeah. but the Earps passed a, a law whereby, actually I think this was before uh, Virgil Earp obtained a position of lawman in Tombstone. Uh, I believe this was before uh, Virgil, but anyway, uh, it was the Earps' responsibility as lawmen to enforce this law. Uh, and the cowboys, which were a very much a criminal organization, which was operating in plain sight in Tombstone, they were um, able to make themselves look like the elite, to fit in with the elite to an extent, and uh, to to dress and to act the part. And a lot of people in Tombstone didn't know the good guys and the bad guys. They didn't know who was law-abiding and uh, honest, hard-working ranchers or businessmen and uh, who were actually these corrupt criminal uh, cowboys. So uh, there, there were, there was the Earp's responsibility to, to enforce the law. Unlike in other adaptations of the story, uh, they actually got along sort of for a while. Um, they tried to. Um, there's a scene in the movie Tombstone, which I like the movie Tombstone, but it's not, you know, uh, it, all that true to, to, to life in some ways, but mostly in terms of the characters and uh, how they're, how they kind of degrade the characters into being characters of themselves, which is fine. It works for that movie. It's just not, a, you know, a great look into the reality of, of the situation entirely. Um, and that scene where the the Earps and the Cowboys first meet, uh, automatically there's a disdain and a mistrust, and that's not how it was. That's not how it was. The Earps went there as businessmen, hoping to build. Um, well, they wanted to be. Um, they wanted to jump into the silver rush, but that was pretty much um, controlled by the time they got there. Not completely, but I mean, all the land was kind of bought up, uh, all the mining claims, they weren't all settled, but I mean, and there were those that would sell, and the Europe's did buy into some of that, but uh, the mining basically, well, there was a large, very sophisticated um, operation in control of much of, 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 that, uh, of the silver rush at that point, so they had to become entrepreneurs. As there was so much silver going through, of course, there were great opportunities for businessmen to build up their own businesses. There was a lot of money flowing through, of course, since Tombstone was a boom town at that time. And um, so the cowboys uh, also had great opportunities to rob people and, and to take advantage of, of all that wealth going through. And uh, the the Earps went there to enterprise and to build up a business, a family business for themselves uh, there. Um, is honest, hardworking, you know, businessmen, but they they also love gambling and, and uh, they, they came from that kind of background. So, I mean, they also hung out with uh, with people of all walks of life, basically. The Earps were, were not snobs. They were very much, uh, you know, men of the people, you might say. It didn't matter to to them how you dressed, what you know, what walk of life you came from. They'd hang out with you, they'd talk to you, they'd befriend you. You know, what what they liked was character, you know, honesty, integrity. If you were the kind of person that you you were a man of your word and you could be relied on for what you claimed that you could be, I mean, then they'd respect you, and it was just like that. 
But um, as they became lawmen, uh, which helped them to obtain more money to fund, you know, to buy up more uh, properties and to build their business, um, because in those days, in some cases, there was a lot of money in being a lawman because lawmen were desperately needed uh, sometimes. So it was a great way of of obtaining additional income. So they took on law positions. Virgil Earp went to Tombstone, though, with the promise to actually be uh, a lawman, to assist with the investigation into the cowboys. Yeah, it was the... Um, trying to remember all this here. I had all these down in notes, and my memory's not always the best. I'm only, I only want to say here what I'm, what I'm sure of. Um, I did a lot of research into all this, this stuff, but uh, if I can remember now, um, Crawley, I think was his name, that brought Virgil to Tombstone, and, and Tombstone was, um, oh, sorry, Virgil Earp, he went to Tombstone with the job, the responsibility of helping Crawley to investigate and to bring down the Cowboys organization. Earp and the other, no, sorry, Wyatt and the other Earp brothers wanted to stay more in, in the business side of things. So they had no interest in, in going to war with this criminal organization. They just wanted to do their jobs, you know, and so as they took on positions of law, it was to enforce the law to anyone. It didn't matter who you were. If you broke the law, well, then you, you would have to answer for it. But they did not want a personal crusade. They did not want to risk everything they had in a war with these cowboys. The cowboys also, who were very strong and very cinder, they had a lot of control over Tombstone. They didn't want to go to war with the, with the Earps and with their allies. That's not what any of them wanted. But it was like a clashing of um, ideologies in a way. As the cowboys were uh, Democrats, and the Democrats and the Republicans, uh, I don't want to go into to modern day politics at all. <laughs> I want to stay out of that completely. I'm a political moderate myself, and I'm, I'm um, you know, I, I don't like to get caught up in, in politics. I respect people's views and whatnot, but I try to stay out of out of modern day politics. Um, but I'm just saying that uh, the parties have gone through changes over over the years. You know, and and uh, so you could say that the Democrats were more conservative back then, and the Republicans were more liberal. Uh, but uh, the Republicans were more uh, still law and order, and the it was the the role of the Republican. Erps to help enforce the law and, and Tombstone and the uh, the cowboys uh, were wanting to live life the way they wanted to freedom for themselves they didn't really care about anyone else and so there was a situation where there was a political rivalry happening here um, the local establishment which was really a Republican didn't like these uh, Democrats these they were trying to take control of the town. So I mean, this is the politics of of, of the time. This is historical. So th this is just how it was that there were was a political rivalry happening there, and as well as ideology and you know the the views of of let's do what's above board. Let's be honest and 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 do what's right, or let's lie, cheat, and steal and look out for ourselves. And so it was a not that the Earps were perfect, no one ever is perfect, but they represented the ideology of law and order. Um, and so anyway, uh, they showed that the OK Corral was bound to happen. That's You'll understand that much better if you read my book. There's a lot that, that happened to explain that. But a lot of it comes down to really the uh, McLaurie brothers. They refused to give up their guns. They said on more than one occasion that they would kill anyone that tried to take their guns. And they made that very specific th threat against the Earps. Um, they made the threat specifically, I mean, against the Earps. Um, and it was their, they had a really tough ideology, even though they were 
free living, you know, like they believed in their own freedom. But they, they had a real tough, rigid ideology. And at the same time, you know, they had a mindset, an attitude of, of just, they were very, 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 very stubborn and willing to, to stand and to die rather than to, to give up on any amount of their freedom. What made them like this is hard to say. I actually researched a bit into their past. I read a, a book on the McLaurys and there's a lot of little facts that's known about them, but there's not enough known to, to comprehend what made them this way. It's just maybe in the future more will come out about them, but at this point there's not enough that where we can say for sure, you know, what really made the McLaurys so hard headed. Maybe it was just the way that they were raised, as maybe it was like a genetic thing, but they, they were incredibly, incredibly stubborn, and they were just never going to give up their guns when the Earps went to get those guns those days, which was the Earps job. And so there was a rivalry, there was a lot of tension, there was a lot that went into the explosive, the explosiveness that, that was to come. But um, what it really came down to was that the Earps, they were tough. They were not going to take no for an answer. If you broke the law, for example, if you were carrying loaded guns, not just in town or from town, I mean, you're walking around town with loaded guns, it's against the law, it's their job to, to stop you, especially if you're part of a gang that's been challenging law itself, on and on and on, they really have responsibility to make sure the town realizes that they have what it takes to enforce the law in Tombstone. The Earths were damn tough, and they were not going to shy away from doing their jobs. So when it came right down to it, of course, they went up to the, to the cowboys and demanded their guns. But the cowboys on that day, they were so upset with the Earps because of the, the conflicts and the McLaurys were never going to give up their guns. So it was blatantly obvious what was going to happen. But the Earps didn't know it was going to happen. They did not know. They, they were offered many, many, many people for help. They were offered tons of, of help on that day but they refused they said no it's a law matter we'll handle it they you know the uh doc holiday had been deputized beforehand he wasn't deputized on that day he was deputized uh, a little while back um and so virgil accepted his help and wyatt didn't even want doc's help reasons for that i have my own theories again much of this isn't really known for a fact, there are lots of little details that we can only guess at. I have my own perception on, on how that came about, and I have that. You'd have to read my book to understand that fully. But uh, on that day, Wyatt was uh, unsure if he wanted Doc's help, if that would be a good thing. And part of that was because Doc was, uh, he was exhausted because it had been a, let's just say, a, a very dramatic night. And not mu they didn't get much sleep. Doc may not have gotten any sleep or hardly any sleep and uh, he was dying of of uh, lung cancer and he uh, was also of course a drunk and he had been drinking and so he was really just beat on that day on that morning on that cold fateful morning Doc Holliday was was really not up for a fight but he was loyal that he he was determined that he would be there for his friends and do what he could but Wyatt took one look at him and just thought, no, nope, you, you're not, you're just not up for this, Doc. But Doc was determined. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm there with you, no matter what. So Doc, even though he was in no state really to, to be of much help, he went anyway. And it turned out Doc was help, of course, in that fight. Um, so yeah, they, they went there uh, believing that the cowboys are not crazy enough to defy the law openly with the whole town watching, because the whole town's expecting a fight because of all the drama that had been going on previously, um, just the night before, and now, you know, uh, earlier in that morning, Ike Clanton was threatening to murder the Earps. There's a, there's a lot that happened here dramatically. Um, but, so yeah, the town had reasons to, to expect a fight. And the Earps just thought, no, the whole town's watching. These cowboys aren't going to, like, fight the lie, even if the cowboys won and killed the Earps, they'd be hunted down by posses, you know? It's like, it, it, would just, it just looks ridiculous. It was a, to the Earps, they thought, this is just another one of those situations where we deal with tough talking guys that think they're on top of the world, and we go up to them, we take their guns, and they, and they, they cow to the law. It had always been that way, even with cowboys. 
Because what are you going to do against lawmen, you know? And especially if everyone's watching. Theoretically, the cowboys had no choice but to give up their guns. But on that day, they didn't. And there were a number of factors why, but the main factor, in my opinion, was that the McLaurie brothers were never going to give up their guns. To me, that was the main reason. But there were a number of other reasons, too. You know, there were a lot of... Uh, how do I put this? A lot of real uh, tough feeling, hard feelings at that point. Um, so, in one way or another, a fight was bound to happen, even if it didn't involve the McLaurys. You know, everyone kind of knew that. Um, but the Earps were really not expecting a fight on that day. They turned down a lot of help because they didn't think they needed it. And then they approached, uh, there was actually a gang. There was a gang of supporters, usually in adaptations um, of the gunfight at the OK Corral. Um, you'll see that there's only like a small handful of people, right? There's the McLaurys, there's Billy Clanton and Ike Clanton. Um, there's a couple others that sometimes will be shown, but never, never any more than that. In reality, there was a crowd of supporters around with them and they were all angry and upset, bitching how they wanted to kill the Earps. And so looking at it from an outside perspective, if you were there and seeing the you know, these three Earps and, and a very drunken, really exhausted Doc Holliday <laughs> approaching this crowd, you'd be thinking, they're crazy, they're going to get themselves killed. And that's exactly what um, the lawman, um, oh, geez, tip of my tongue. It wasn't that long ago that I wrote this book. I'm already, for, you know, these little details. I get on camera and then I forget some of these little uh, uh, details. Uh, not Johnny Ringo, Johnny Behan. I know that name. I'm on camera and I forget it. But uh, yeah, Johnny Behan uh, warned them. Uh, Johnny Behan's a whole other story. He's an, uh, an interesting character, let's say, as well. But I don't want to spoil too much on the story if you're not that familiar with what happened. But uh, Johnny Behan certainly tried to talk the Earps away from it. He fully expected a fight. But he didn't have much credibility with the Earps at that point. They didn't believe him. And so uh, they moved in to, to arrest them. And it did not go so well. Needless to say, uh, there was a, a, a situation where the cowboys refused to give up their guns. Billy Clanton was angry, outraged at the Earps for daring to uh, charge his brother Ike. Uh, and for daring to pistol whip him, yeah, because uh, it was um, Virgil Earp early that morning that that uh, smacked his the handle of his pistol over I Clanton's head to knock him down when he was carrying guns through town and threatening to murder the Earps. So that was Virgil's way uh, of apprehending I Clanton without an actual like gunfight in the town. So it was the least violent, arguably the best and least violent way to handle it. But nevertheless, Billy Clanton was not happy that his brother was pistol whipped and was therefore in pain and, and, and really angry and upset with the Earps and had been publicly embarrassed, which was really all I Clanton's fault, of course. But Billy Clanton was a young member of the Clantons. The Clantons were main, main uh, fact, faction within the, the Cowboys Association. The Cowboys, by the way, were technically an association. I'm going to try to keep this short. I just wanted to point out that they were becoming increasingly organized. When you look at the facts, they were fairly well organized. And uh, I, I believe that Johnny Ringo was very much trying to organize them more. So, yes, they were technically an association of various different gangs, different factions, but they were becoming an organization. Arguably, they didn't really become a serious organization before they were destroyed, but they were certainly becoming that. They were becoming organized, and I believe Johnny Ringo was uh, the main figure in organizing them, and because he saw a court, he was a man I think who saw well. He was an opportunist who saw a great opportunity. For a tremendous amount of power for himself and by the end he became known as the king of the cowboys johnny ringo the king of the cowboys and uh he he was said to have done a lot to organize them and well, i believe it the facts show that they were increasingly organized so they were very much becoming an, an organized mafia um 
but that wouldn't be that wouldn't really come to pass um, after the gunfight the Earp survived although a couple of them had been shot and uh, Doc Holliday survived and uh, there were two dead McLaurys one did Clanton I Clanton ran for his life um, it does appear that uh, Ike Clanton wasn't armed on that day. It's not 100% known, but it does appear that he wasn't armed and that he had begged uh, Wyatt not to kill his brother, Billy, uh, which would have been heroic, since I, I do believe that most likely Ike Clanton was not armed. He, he made out he wasn't, and it seemed true because he was down on the ground before Wyatt Earp begging him not to shoot him and I would think that Wyatt would have seen if there really was a, a gun under his shirt I would think that Wyatt would have noticed that when he was down on his knees begging him but he was also fighting with him fighting with his arms trying to prevent him from fighting and the fight's already happening so I mean Wyatt has to shoot to protect himself and his brothers who are being shot at so I Clanton, in a way, was a heroic thing to try to save his brother, but of course, from the Earp's perspective, he was fighting them in a, in his own way, you know, and they, I couldn't have that in that situation. Why I had to keep shooting, so he fought off uh, Ike, and he said, Ike, get the fighting or get away. In other words, if I have to shoot you, with, even though you don't have a gun, I'll do it. You know, that's basically what he was saying. Get the hell away from me. <laughs> I am in a fight for my life here. So, um, I Clanton knew, of course, if anyone was serious with their warnings or with their threats, I mean, that was Wyatt Earp. So, I Clanton got that and he ran for his life. And um, it wasn't, you know, that gets exaggerated. Some accounts of I Clanton, just want to say briefly that it does get exaggerated, that he becomes a bit of a buffoon, which he wasn't. He was actually fairly well read. He was a he was good at writing like letters, you know. Every indication that he was fairly intelligent and uh, was actually one of the important members of the family. Uh, I was going to say earlier, like the uh, the Clantons were a very important faction within the Cowboys Association. Um, they were responsible for a lot of like the ca organizing a lot of the cattle raids and stuff. You know, sometimes that would be Curly Bill or or probably uh, Johnny Ringo, but. Um, Certainly, the the Clantons were one of the leading, if not the leading, kind of fa faction, especially before the character known as Old Man Clanton died. Long while he was alive, Old Man Clanton, really the Clantons were the leading faction within the Cowboys Association. Eventually, Johnny Ringo became the most central figure, but that came about over time. Um, but yeah, Old Man Clanton was the closest thing they had to a central leader while he was alive. And uh, after Old Man Clanton died, within the Clanton family, basically I Clanton was looked upon as, as the leader. That followed, you know, after his father died, that he followed in his father's footsteps and kind of leading the family and therefore being a, a major leader within the Cowboys organization or association slash organization. So. Yeah, he was no idiot by any stretch, but he was very dramatic. He was, you could say, over dramatic sometimes. He was, from my perspective, he just seems like a larger than life figure. And I often refer to Ike Clanton as a larger than life figure because he was so over dramatic. And for me, is the per, is the guy who who wrote this this story. You know, um, it, it was a, a a joy for me to write Ike Clanton. He brings so much you know um, so much energy and excitement and drama to the story because he was so dramatic um, so yeah I mean he had he was a guy of big emotions and and overreaction you could say but not a stumbling fumbling buffoon not at all sometimes he might have looked like that but anyone could in the wrong situation you know even the even wider had moments where like you know he dropped his gun and the gun would go off accidentally <laughs> it happens to the, to the best of them you know so everyone has their moments in life where they look like a fool even wide Earp had those moments sometimes so you know i clanton wasn't was no fool not at all um that but he had some foolish moments in the story it's just how it goes 
so anyway, um, the gunfight at the OK Corral was the Earps doing what their job and believing that it wouldn't result in a gunfight, but it did. The Cowboys refused to give up their guns for a number of reasons, especially that the McLaurie brothers were never going to give up their guns to anyone. They'd rather die, and they did on that day. You know, unfortunately for everyone, gunfight occurred, and uh, some people still think that the Earps were responsible or half responsible, and no, no, the facts do not show that. The facts show that the Earps were doing their job and that they did not believe there was going to be a gunfight on that day. They did not go there to gun down the cowboys. It was, it's, it's, it's a ridiculous argument, it really is. The facts do not show that at all. Um, so I wanted to make that clear. Um, and uh, for what resulted from this, killing, I mean, the, it doesn't matter if they did the right thing. To the cowboys, three of their, their, their own are dead. The Clantons were a major, major faction within the Cowboys Association. And now Billy Clanton is dead, killed by the, killed by the Earps. And the McLaurie brothers were important members, key members at that point of the association. They were good friends with some of the you know, other key members. And now they're dead. So the Cowboys, the, the Clantons, and the rest of the Cowboys were very upset with the Earps. And so it was only a matter of time until they fought back. And the Cowboys, they weren't like the Earps. They weren't straight up, honest, you know, give you a fight like to your face. No, 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 no. The gunfight at the OK Corral, so to speak, actually happened in a, an abandoned lot further down the street. But the so-called gunfight at the OK Corral was really unexpected for a number of reasons because the Cowboys were not type that would give, usually give you a fight to your face. They'd shoot you in the back. And that's the manner in which they went after the Earps afterwards. With, and um, the results of that would come to be known as the Vendetta Ride, where the Earps fought back how they were able to against the, the Clantons. And that goes into a moral or legal gray area, but that's a very interesting conversation. And we'll discuss that next time. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something from this. Um, I have to mention my book. Uh, Vendetta Ride, The True Story of Wyatt Earp is available on Amazon if you're interested. Thank you for listening, and um, I'll see you next time.